Hello and welcome back to the channel. So something a little bit different today. It's another watch from Canada, but it's a very, very hyped watch. Not like the Whitby, which I felt last week deserved more attention. This one has done the rounds on YouTube, but I was keen to get one in my hands and test it out for myself. And what better way than to test it on a week in Mexico? Hang on, that's better. So this today is all about the Momentum Sea Quartz. I'll be honest with you, I've never watched Magnum PI, so I can't come at it from that angle, but I love the look of this watch, and I'm keen to see if it delivers on all the hype, or if it's gonna end up as a bit of a flop. So I'll take you day by day through my experiences in Mexico. Let's get away from the Canadian winter and get some sunshine. So day one with the momentum on the wrist, this was all about traveling. So for a long day in and out of airports and aircraft, comfort is gonna be the king here. And I'm pleased to say the watch was actually very comfortable on the wrist. The Tropic strap was excellent. It's not the absolute softest I've ever felt, but it's definitely on the softer side. So I think it works great on the watch and I'm gonna keep this watch on the Tropic. It was comfortable throughout my entire day of traveling and I didn't get to the hotel and check in and desperately want to take the watch off, which is always a good sign when it's been on the wrist for more than 12 hours. Before we go to day two, let's have a look at some of the dimensions on this one. So it's a 42 millimeter diameter case. That's without the crown guards. It's 11.1 millimeters thick. It weighs 95 grams on this Tropic strap. It's 46.7 millimeters lug to lug, and it's a 20 mil lug width and the Tropic that's provided is quick release. So that's a nice bonus. Anyway, day two, waking up in Mexico, and the first thing that we wanted to do was head down to the beach. And that means putting the momentum through its paces in salt water and sand. And again, absolutely no issue. So this is 300 meters of water resistance. So as you'd expect, a splash in the ocean from myself shouldn't cause it any trouble and I'm relieved to say it did not. It performed admirably. I found the watch to be highly legible, even in direct sunlight, and one of the contributing factors to that legibility is the minutes hand. That huge orange pattern there is really visible in all lights. When we look at the sapphire crystal, it is AR coated. It's not excellent AR coating, but it's certainly sufficient. And I think you don't miss not having a little bit more AR because there's such high legibility and contrast on this watch with the hands, the dial and the indices. Just as a side note, and sorry if I'm teaching you to suck eggs here, if you do take your watch in the ocean, always good to fully submerge it and give it a good wash in fresh water. Otherwise you get salt that tends to corrode, especially underneath the bezel, for example, and it tends to sit inside some of those areas. So always good to give it a really good rinse afterwards. Day three, we did lots of walking around in and out of shops. I went into a couple of watch stores and you'll see here Invicta and Breitling, both ends of the scale. And the Breitling was beautiful, but my goodness me, so expensive now. Anyway, what did I learn about the Sea Quartz on day three? Well, it's pretty versatile. Even though it looks a little bit more utilitarian on the Tropic, there is an optional bracelet. And I do think that with this kind of watch, it's relatively slim at 11.1 millimeters of thickness. So you could wear it with a shirt. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. And I think on a bracelet or on a leather, you'd be able to get away with wearing this one with much smarter attire. Well, much smarter than I was wearing in Mexico anyway, but it does have versatility. Looking a bit more at the design of the watch, specifically the case, you'll see this one has some really nice chamfers along the side between the brushed and the polished surfaces. I think these add a little bit of elegance, a little bit of class. And at the price point, I don't necessarily expect some nice chamfers. So it's nice to see the detail on this case. The brushing is of reasonable quality. It's not exceptional, but again, we're talking about a reasonably affordable watch. Talking about the case back, it is a high polish case back. You'll see I filmed it here as I peeled the sticker off and it looks fantastic. But by the end of my vacation, 
plenty of scratches. You only need to look at a polished case back the wrong way and a scratch will appear. It may be historically accurate to the original Chrono Sport watch, so I'm not gonna be too harsh on it, but I am gonna say, personal preference, I would much rather it was brushed, even if that went against the original design. Day four, and we took jungle buggies out and swam in a cenote, something you absolutely must do if you haven't been to Mexico and you do plan on going. If you've already been, you've probably already done it. So you know just how beautiful the cenotes are and the jungle and a lot of the scenery inland in Mexico can be. The test for the momentum today was primarily susceptibility to damage with lots of uh, branches flying around while we're in the buggies and of course lots of vibration as well and a little bit of splashing in the water once more. Again, the watch was absolutely perfect. There was all kinds of dust and sand kicked up. I was absolutely caked in the stuff and uh, I'm pleased to say no lasting damage to me or to the watch. On days like this, where you're really putting the watch for its paces, it's nice to have that sapphire crystal and that sapphire bezel. So I'm not worried about scratches, even though it did have some impacts with some branches. Something else that makes the watch quite rugged, which is nice to see, is that crown guard. And you'll see the crown sits really nicely and deep inside the crown guard. So if you were to give it a large impact on the top or the sides, I think the crown is really well protected in this one and you're unlikely to break it off. Day five was as close as this one got to going very far underwater, we went out snorkeling. Now, I'm not a scuba diver and I've never used a watch for scuba diving, but I can assume that if I was, I would want a diving bezel that would feel reliable if it was gonna be relying on timing my dive and judging when I'm gonna come back up to the surface. Now, here's the problem with the Momentum Sea Court, and it's the biggest problem that I have. The bezel action is awful. There is loads of play. The clicks are totally unconvincing. I can wiggle it left and right, forwards, backwards, up and down, and it's not really aligned. I mean, if I push it back as far as I can clockwise, it's not aligned. I can sort of wiggle it into alignment, but at some point during the day, it goes back out of alignment. It's, it's awful, and I would have been disappointed with this bezel action on a Pagani design or on insert cheap Aliexpress watch here. I'd be really annoyed about it. So on a watch at this price, although this watch does so many things right, the bezel is absolutely not one of them. But whilst the bezel isn't good, something that is great and would be beneficial, perhaps if you were seriously diving with this, or like me, you're just a big fan of it, is the loom. Now I love watches with good loom, and I've got to be honest, I was expecting the loom on this to be rubbish. The indices on this one are slightly yellow tinged and they're only printed. So typically you'd expect it to perform worse than applied indices. And I think this watch has really changed my opinion on what can be done with printed dials. This is not the blocks like what Tudor have done to achieve chunks of loom. This is genuinely printed. And I've always given watches a pass for having rubbish loom if they've got a printed dial. The loom on this watch can genuinely rival a lot of other watches that have applied indices. It might not be the absolute best, but just have a look at my loom comparison with my loom champion here, and you'll see it's not far off. It's genuinely doing a fantastic job. So props to Momentum for not only delivering great loom, but for genuinely changing what I can expect from a printed dial. Day six in Mexico, and there's not a huge amount more I can do to put the watch through its paces. So instead, I thought we could have some closing thoughts and discussion on this watch. Something that I haven't mentioned so far is the movement. So this is a Swiss Ronda 507. They call it an R507. I think it's just the Ronda 507, according to Caliber Corner. And one of the questions that is often asked with quartz is does the second hand line up? On my watch, this seconds hand does line up, but it doesn't have a huge amount of torque and there is a little bit of play in the seconds hand, which is common in cheaper quartz movements, Swiss or not. So what I find with this watch is if I lay the watch face down, it will hit the markers pretty much bang on. But as soon as the watch is up on my wrist or at a different angle, it will be affected by gravity and it will sit slightly to the left or slightly to the right of the marker. From a distance, I don't really notice this, so I'm pretty happy with it. But it's worth mentioning because if you have a big OCD about the seconds hand being bang on 
to the markers like the Casio Oceanus was, then this one would be disappointing for you. On the plus side, it is a very quiet tick. I can't hear anything to be honest through the case. I don't know if that's because it's a thick case or a quiet movement, but it's not gonna keep you up at night on a bedside table. So to summarize quickly the good and bad points as we've gone through the week, I think the good points are fantastic looks, the historically accurate recreation of the Chrono Sport as worn by Tom Selleck, which as I told you, I've never watched Magnum PI, the amazing printed dial loom, the super comfortable Tropic strap, and you can argue the water resistance is over-engineered. I think 300 meters is well in excess of anything that most of these watches are ever gonna see, but being a watch geek, it's nice to know that it's there, right? And the bad points with this watch, the alignment and action on that bezel, really, like I said, my biggest complaint. And the one thing that you need to be aware of before you purchase the watch, the polished case back, which, like I said, personally not for me, the seconds hand being slightly sloppy, albeit on the markers without the effects of gravity. And the accuracy with this one, don't expect that you're buying a high precision quartz. It's negative 10 to plus 20 seconds per month. But again, it's 260 US dollars, so you probably expected that. So I think it's everything. I'll fly back home and I will see you in a second for the conclusion. Yes or no, this is your last chance. Don't beat around the bush. So is this 300 Canadian dollars well spent? Well, to be honest with you, I think it is and I think it will stay in my collection. I think it's a real shame that they didn't just modernize the bezel action as they have done with other parts of the watch like the loom and that sapphire insert that they've used but the look of this watch the way it makes me feel when I look down and see it on the wrist and that warm retro vintage vibe that I get makes it all worthwhile and it's strong enough for me to forgive the shortcoming on this watch so for me it's good enough to stay in my collection but what about your collection would you buy one of these have you bought one of these if so, let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon and all that good stuff. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Cheers.